Hello everybody, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a Digital Rebar tutorial. Uh, in this case, I am going through the setup process for updating the catalog for the multi-site demo. So if you've been playing along with multi-site demo um, and you've watched us do this, uh, we just did a release, the 4.2 or 420 release, if you prefer uh, to think that way. And uh, we need to update the catalogs. So that's not something that's actually in this flow of the chapters uh, for the multi-site demo. This is a bonus segment that actually is before all this where we, we actually uh, work the catalog. So if you're watching this, this is mainly focused on sort of rack-end employees who are helping customers build catalogs. But if you're a customer or a community member who wants to learn the process, there is nothing secret in what we're doing. Uh, and hopefully you'll get some benefit from the tutorial some advanced uh, magic from a digital rebar perspective. And in this case, what I've got going is I have my, my, dev, in, my dev environment right now. Uh, I've been playing with it a bit. Um, nothing special here. Um, just I've got my catalog. It's attached to the internet. So I've got the most recent catalog. You'll see uh, it's been updated on the 29th. Uh, so that was just before the four, that was part of the 4.9 release. And uh, I'm going to walk through this process. In this case, I am using the RackN multi-site demo, uh, multi-site demo um, GitHub. All the code that we've been doing for multi-site demos are, is open. You're welcome to play around with it. It moves pretty fast, so there's some complex stuff in there, um, but it's useful to play with. Um, it's got a lot of cool things in it. And a lot of lessons learned, especially if you start digging into some of the multi-site um, places, because we're using this as a as a playground for uh, some really advanced workflow pieces. And our job today is to update the catalogs um, that are used to drive this demo. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, that demo uses a captive catalog system, meaning that we build a catalog that is specific to the uh, DRP implementation. And uh, what that means is I need to be able to find our catalog file in the middle of all this of all these files. So let me collapse things a little bit. This is the multi-site catalog. This is the Linode catalog that allows us to do some Linode tricks. Um, and somewhere deep in here is a actual catalog file, which should be called uh, rackingcatalog.json. Uh, let me see. It's right here, rack and catalog ref. This is the starting one. And then uh, rack and catalog.json is going to be created from the reference, um, if that makes sense. So, what we want to be able to do is allow somebody to create their own catalog. So, my job in this case is to build an updated rack and catalog JSON and then um, copy it back into the catalog ref after I've proven that it works correctly. Uh, one thing that you should note is that all of this is based on going into repo.rackend.io, which will download the master catalog. Um, so in this case, the cat, cat doesn't like this version of the catalog so much. So what you see here is this is the catalog. It's got all the pieces and parts in it. I'm not working from that catalog. I'm actually working from the catalog that we built for this uh, multi-site demo. So in this case, I can actually come in and say and update the version. So it's 31-1. Uh, so this is my my special. I'm working on New Year's Eve for this. Um, all these things are really just copied straight out. I could create a custom version that said Rob special whatever. Um, but since this is really copied from the rack and catalog, I'm okay to leave these uh, bits and pieces in here. Then the next thing I'm coming down, I'm just looking at my catalog items. So in this case, certs stable. So this is our certs uh, component. This is the stable version of it. Um, and one of the things that you would note is in certs stable here, it actually provides a link. And this is where it sometimes it's helpful to, to restart. So let's do this. Instead of starting from here, which is just the racking catalog, I'm actually going to do the right thing. And I'm going to grab this catalog. Try and grab the whole thing. It's a lot of it. And I'm going to go and do a complete restart of that catalog. Woo! 
All right, so now we've started with the actual racking catalog. And we're going to go and say, OK, what do I need from here to make all this stuff work? Um, and so to do that, you, you do need to think through what is in the version sets. So maybe before I mess with this catalog, which is now the original total rack end catalog from, from the 42 release, I'm going to get a check of what the version sets that I've got going are. Those are in the multi-site demo, in the uh, content that I build, a whole bunch of stuff open. Here is the version sets. And so you'll see we've got a series of version sets, probably a better place to start. And if I look at, say, site base, which is where most of these things are going to come from, this will tell me what I need. I need the community content package. I need the task library, uh, crib. Linode, which I bring in. So remember, Linode is, is one I've defined up here. Certs, so certs is part of our catalog. UX views is part of our catalog. So I need to know that. And then the certs catalog. So for this version, the stable version, which is perfect, uh, I need these pieces. And I just pick the stable parts of those. So if I look at the tip version, the same thing. In this case, all the version numbers are tip, same contents, which makes sense. Be a problem if the uh, things in that library were different, but they could be. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to get my versions, my versioning correct. So let me find out what our 4.1 1. Do we have a dot 2? We do. I don't think we got to dot 3. We did. Is there a 4.4? No, 4.1.3 is the highest version number that we went in 4.1. So over here, I've been calling this 4.1.1. We actually want to call, we want to create one called 413. Uh, let's do this. So I'm going to create a 413. I know it's off screen. Dot YAML, excellent. So now I have a 413 version of this, and I can update all of these to 4.1.3. Whoops, 413. You can't see this, it's off your screen. Hold on a second. 4.1.3. Excellent. So now I've just updated the, the base version. And I'm going to do the same thing. We should have a 4.2. 4.20. Excellent. And so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to save this as 4.2.0. I like it. And we're going to replace 4.1 dot three with four two zero. Oh. Okay, so now what I've done is I've created version sets that include the two versions that I'm interested in. And then I want to remove the ones that I'm not interested in. Uh, so let's make sure that I don't care about anything else. Site base, uh, let's see, includes our Linode content, certs, crib, task library. This task library in here, task library is in here. Uh, manager, let's see, it includes multi-site demo. This is ignore, so this actually says, hey, don't m mess with these versions at all. Uh, let's see, manager stable is also ignore, except for the manager plugin, which should be set to stable. So we'll need to pull the manager plugin in this also. I'll show you how to do those things. License uh, is the license. Credential is the credentials, excellent. Cluster um, are just some mostly set global variables. So the only place we're really pulling anything from the catalog is in this site base um, catalog. Uh, and so now that we've got the right pieces and parts, what we want to do is actually build up the license. Ah, but before I do that, I'm going to do a little housekeeping so I don't forget. Uh, let's see, that's 4.2. Over here in the thing, I want to remove, so I want to git remove uh, multi-site demo, version sets, site base. Uh, let's see, 4.1. 1. Nope, that's not how it was typed. 4. Oh, v. <sighs> v. Uh, 
because I don't want I don't want these things cluttering up our catalog because we're not going to support them from that perspective. They're the only things that are versions, so now we're going to move into just having our uh, versioned components at 4.1 and 4.2. Uh, so that is excellent. So now what I have to do, a little bit onerous, is I need to come into the catalog. I'm going to zoom. I'm going to... Oh, we're right. And I'm going to start pruning things out of the catalog that I don't need. So I don't need um, auth stable, auth tip. So I'm just collapsing these just to make it a little bit easier. I wonder if there's a way to do a, a big collapse. Um, so all of these pieces and parts that I don't I don't actually need, I'm going to, I want to be able to take out. Let's say so here, and uh, literally just coming in and. Oops, need that. Sorry. All right. So this is exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be eliminating all these bits and pieces from here that I, I don't need because they are redundant for what the catalog is. And it's important that I remove them because if I didn't, what would happen is uh, I would need to import them. And I'll show you that in a, in a second. Um, so let's see. I'm going to go until I find one of the site-based pieces that I need. Uh, let's see, these are not alphabetized. DRP, certs, certs is going to be the next one. So let's find it. So I'm going to go buy a stable. These are happily alphabetical, so I can keep going. BIOS, 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 burn in, burn in, burn in, burn in. Call back, call back. You can see I'm just reading them out of here. Call back, certs, certs I think I do need. So let's uh, keep certs in. So I want search stable. It's going to have all the right locations and versions. Search stable. Here's search. All right. So let me cl collapse this as I go so that we keep seeing them. And I don't need these older versions either. So I'll be able to remove quite a bit um, when I look at it. So let's see. Keep these collapsed. So here's search. For Actually, one of the things that's useful to check from this is it looks like we didn't build a 413 version of certs. So I need to come back into uh, this version. And even though it's 413, certs here is only available as 412. So I need to make sure that that is uh, recognized. I don't need the 41 section. So literally in this case, I am cherry picking things out of the catalog that match only the things that I have as version sets. If I have more in my version sets, then I'm going to be using more things in my version sets. So let's go back to this over here. I'm going to alphabetize these a little bit so they're easier for me next time. So we have DRP. Crib is going to be next. Remember Linode, we, br we bring in ourselves, so I don't need Linode. So I'll do DRP content, community content, crib, and task library out of the catalog. Excellent. Uh, so that means I don't need these. I can jump happily until, um, let's see, we're skipping CoreOS, CoreOS. A lot of stuff in this catalog. It's big. Dev library I don't need. Docker context. Uh, we actually use, and so I am going to go in and uh, keep the Docker context pieces. This is a place where I miss something. I'll show you what it is. It's always helpful to do these videos as a long roll from that perspective. So the Docker context and some of the ways that uh, Shane's been modifying the system, if we look at manager, here's Docker context but we're ignoring it. We're not bringing in the latest versions, and that's why um, we hadn't been worried about that version in the past. But notice there are some things in here that we do need to worry about. Um, I have to remember to pull in Manager as part of this. So let's not jump past Manager. All right, so Docker Context. Technically, I don't need, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and include it uh, for reference. Once again, I don't need the 4.1 version of it. Uh, technically, I don't even need the 4.1. We just want latest, but 
Here's DRP community content, definitely want all that. Don't need the 4.1 version of it. So it's a little monotonous. This is where you might want to jump, jump ahead if you want. Um, just pulling out community contrib. Don't need that. Uh, boy, there's a ton of stuff in this catalog. Uh, I think at one point Greg had talked about um, actually pulling the, um, we don't do DRP from this model. We, um, I wonder where we pulled DRP from. I think I actually need DRP. Yeah, all right, so you <laughs> glad you kept watching. Uh, this is DRP stable. We need this. The system's going to use it for when it does upgrades, so I still need to know that. So it's not quite as simple as just, hey, yank everything I don't, I think I don't need. Uh, let's see, 413, I don't need 412. We're only doing 413. Oops. Here's 42, stable, excellent. Here's tip, that looks great. I shouldn't need the CLIs in this case. Uh, now I'm back to doing these mass deletions on things that I don't need. Let's see, file beat. Yep, lots of stuff. There is definitely a lot of a lot of a lot of things that we've been dragging around in the catalog. You don't normally see them because it's just a big text file. You don't worry about All right, image builder. Still don't need it. Um, I'm looking for manager as one of my next things. Let's see, image deploy IPMI. Don't need that for this. Crib. Here we go. So crib, crib tip. Once again, we're going to delete the 411. That looks great. Coop spray, don't need that anymore. So I think the next thing on our list that we're looking for is manager. Getting close, there's manager stable. All right, so here's manager. Definitely want that. Can take out 411. 42, that looks great. All right, and now we're back into things I can start deleting as a block. One of the things, that's right. Um, okay. Boy, we have a lot of integrations. What's other? Oh, this is where I could do a running, running dialogue catalog of all the things. Oh, there's even the rack and catalog, which it is itself in the catalog. Uh, all right, raid, rancher, Slack. I haven't used that one in a while. Let's see the plugin that is not the sledgehammer builder. Task library. There's the next one I was looking for. So we definitely need the task library. Let's see, but we, we're gonna prune down the only the things we need, so we don't need 411, got it. Tenant controller, my goodness. Uh, Terraform, that's old, old stuff, because we do Terraform a better way now. Pull all that out, tower. Let's see, UX views, I need that too. There's our UX views. So this is the uh, process of building a new catalog. It's uh, not hard, just a little monotonous and you have to be careful that you do it right. Let's see, validation, don't need it. And uh, let's see, 412. 
virtual box. Great. VMware don't need that for this demo. And so that's the end, I believe. That looks great. So here's UX views. I don't need that comma. Shouldn't do any harm. Uh, I'll take it out. So now I can quickly look because I collapsed all the things. I need certs. I need Docker context. I need the DRP community content. This this I could probably do without, but DRP community content, DRP stable, uh, the versions I want. And we use stable and tip because they're good placeholders. Um, and they can be referenced. So and we do reference them crib, manager, task library. That looks great. UX views. This looks this looks actually just right. So I'm gonna save this. Uh, good, good. Okay. And now I'm gonna check over here. All that looks fine. I'm gonna get the stable version of the uh, plugin manager, all those pieces. Here's 413. Linode content is still versioned where it is. I'll show you, let me show you where that version comes from, by the way. If I come over in Linode, look at version, that's where that comes from. Okay, so all these version sets look, look pretty darn good. Um, and so now what I want to do is I want to take that information and I want to build my rebar infrastructure to use this catalog. Um, so to do that, I would wanna, I'm going to look. This is actually all in the management script because the management script does this. So what it's going to do, um, it's going to, uh, first it's going to pull in my catalog, but then it's going to um, actually use that catalog as a reference point. So what I want to, what I can do, and I'll just do this manually so you can see it, is I'm going to upload my catalog. I don't know why there's a catalog part in here. Probably some failed attempt to do this last time. I'm going to upload. Uh, let's see. I can just drag in the file. All right, here's my files. So I'm going to drag over the catalog. So I'm taking that file, I'm going to upload it, just send it straight to the directory, and here it is. So now that that is done, what I can do is I can then reference the catalog. So this, right now it's using the big rack end catalog. I wanted to use my mini rack end catalog. Uh, simple enough to do. And to do that, what I need to do is there's a global parameter for that. So I need to go into my profiles, global. And I don't have anything here that shows this. So nice with all the encryption, you never worry about showing things that you're not supposed to show. Um, catalog. So I need catalog. There's a catalog URL. Look at that right here. And for this catalog URL, I'm going to call it HTTP URS. Doesn't matter. Files. Well, it doesn't matter a bit. Um, 127.0.01 slash file slash rack n dash catalog dot json. I'm going to check this to make sure it actually is a real file. So I messed something up. Oh, 8092. Bingo. So here's the catalog I just touched. I'm going to put it into the catalog URL over here. Excellent. And save that. So now I'm overriding the uh, online catalog. Now it won't take yet. I have to do a hard refresh. Um, in this case, it's not clear that I'm using that catalog, so I should have renamed it, um, uh, which would make a lot of sense. So let me also show you how to do that so that you will avoid confusion. Uh, in this case, this catalog I have, the description, racking catalog, I should call this uh, MSM demo catalog, and I can call this version 31-0 or dash one. Yeah, there we go. That looks much better. Go back into my files directory, and uh, I'm going 
to upload the new version of this. Upload. Let's see if that did it. No, I guess I can check it right here. Bingo, definitely changed it here. And now if I uh, go over, hit refresh, go to catalog, now it's telling me MSM demo catalog, look at that. And then this is the, the catalog I have and it only shows the versions that I provided in the file. So that's step number one. So this is really helpful. And if I stopped here, this would be a, a solid win, but this isn't where we're gonna stop. Um, because right now, if I did this, multi-site manager would now drag everything still off the internet, which we don't want. We want to be able to use cached copy so we can upload it as a single thing and then save all that transfer. So to do that, and I think I've done it here. Yeah, there's actually a place where I've, I've done it before. There's a rack and catalog. Nope, rack and catalog. In this case, it's empty. Um, we're going to populate this rack and catalog in my local system. So I'm going to drag all the files to my local system using the catalog I have online. I'm going to say that a little bit more slowly so that you can understand exactly what I mean. So we just created this custom catalog and it points to a select set of stuff, um, a limited number of versions and binaries, and it, it knows where they are on the internet. There is a command we can run that will drag those files off of the internet and store them in our files rack and catalog uh, system. And that's exactly what we need to do in this case. Um, to do that, I need some command line files. I'm gonna show you where they come from first so you can find them yourself. So if you look at the manager uh, file and what we've done, we build the catalog, we install the catalog, we install some items, and then um, there's a special set of commands where we actually go, so in this case, we, we get that static catalog, which is the catalog that I'm about to create in this case, um, but I don't have one with all this latest stuff in it. So instead, I need to tell the system to go and pull it in. And to do that, what I'm doing in this case is I'm gonna take DRPCLI and I'm gonna tell it to update the uh, catalog, to update the local version from this catalog file. Okay. And then I'm going to tell the manager to build the catalog. Those two things are what take that static catalog I just built and then actually create a running catalog for me. So I'm going to do those things over here. Here's my system. Dear PCLI, let's just make sure I'm on the right machine. Machines, list. Okay, this is my local machine, excellent. And I need to install the manager plugin. So let me, let me get the latest DRPCLI um, catalog. I think it's install manager. Let's see if it's that simple. Uh, let's see, nope, item manager install. I can never remember the syntax on this one. There we go, that looks good item install manager and this look uh, stable and tip today are the same so we're good so that catalog it just installed the manager for me off of the internet which is excellent so I needed that as a starting point um, so here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this file catalog update local uh, rack and catalog is still what I've called it all right so Oh, I didn't put the catalog in the right directory location is what that just told me. So let me fix that, put it in the right spot. Rebar, hmm, rebar catalog, racking catalog. Okay, so I need to fix that rebar catalog. Racking, this is where I'm actually supposed to put the file. So let me put that in the right spot. So it would have been smarter to point the local catalog to this file as a note, so this is where I should have, should have done it, not in the other directory. I'm not gonna worry about that for, for now. I'm gonna just put it in both. Rerun this. Hmm. I must have missed a step. I 
let's see. So all the all the steps that I'm going through at this point are here. The thing I'm trying to do is save the save the static catalog back. Let's see. So in this case, files, rebar catalog, rack and catalog. Uh, so let me fix my catalog URL to be the right thing that I should have done the first time. While my dog plays basketball. Go for the three pointer. Hmm. It's not a very good shot, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, so root. So rebar catalog here, rack and license, that looks great. And I'm going to go back into the profiles, global, edit, and over here I'm editing. So I just need to say rebar uh, catalog. make sure that that is a valid file that does not look good all right so it's files did I not do it right that's distressing files rebar catalog I didn't if you're following along at home you're like Rob you forgot to upload that file upload bracken catalog JSON that looks much better not what I wanted at all. This is where I wanted to do that. That looks much better. All right, so here, let's go back to root. Take, delete this. I must have removed it from the wrong place. You were shouting at me that I was doing the wrong thing and I wasn't, wasn't paying close enough attention. Here we go. So edit this, paste this over in here. Isn't that cool how that works? Okay. Files, rebar catalog, rebar catalog, JSON. That looks great. Save and close. All right. Refresh the browser. Make sure my catalog is right. MSM catalog. That looks great. See if it's happier now. Hmm. I wonder what the dash C does. I am trying to figure out what's going on with this. Rebar catalog is the right spot. Racking catalog is great. All right, I'm gonna troubleshoot this for a second and then come right back to the video. Okay, I'm reading the code a little bit more carefully here, so I just wanted to show you what I'm, what I'm looking at. So in this case, we actually have uh, some catalog install items that I haven't duplicated yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate them. Um, So this is just making sure that I have the versions of the things that I want. Excellent. Um, and that's installing them in the system itself. And then I'm going to, this is the Linode content, I'm not so worried about that. But what I do want to do is I'm now running the build catalog first, which is something I had skip, skipped doing before. Excellent. And then I'm going to upload the catalog to the right place. So this is the catalog I was messing with and I forgot the quote. Well, same thing as dragging and dropping it. I'm just doing it straight out of the manager description so that I get the right thing. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, oh, then I'm going to install the catalog. This is important. I'm going to install the catalog as the um, endpoint. So let me set my RS endpoint, which is not, I think it's uh, not set here. So 
So if you were following along at home and you want to do the same thing, what you're really uh, doing is you're, you're just following script the components for the script that we have laid out. Um, and the step I'm going to do at the end is going to shortcut this so that the same steps, which you want to follow in the new site, don't actually have to do all the uploads. That'll make sense in just a minute. Um, this is all good. So it tells us we're missing a plugin. That's all right. So now what I've done is I've completed this block. That's excellent. And now this is where I would try to download the static content file, which I'm going to build. And then I'm going to go in. And since I haven't built it yet, I'm going to now run my command to make this work. And now it works. So the thing I was missing is I hadn't installed the content, uh, the, that cataloging content. Um, if this isn't obvious from already, if you look at, so this is just going to download a whole bunch of stuff based on what that, that static count, content is. Um, I'm going to show you something that if it, you didn't realize it before is, is worth realizing it. Actually, I'm going to show you where it's formatted more, more beautifully. This is just a content pack. So the, the catalog is it, itself a content pack. And when you install the catalog as a content pack, which is what that last command I issued does, then we can use it to generate a uh, local catalog. So that's the thing that you have to realize as part of this, this process and why it's so important to go back uh, through this uh, sequence. But now what literally is going on is the manager, and this is a feature of the manager code. That's why I called it as a um, catalog, sorry, cat against the catalog, but this is an action included by the manager. And it's literally dragging in these files out of the catalog and storing them. Let me show you where it's storing them. It's nice to do it where you have a fast internet connection, by the way, I have a fast internet connection. So, but if I go into files now and go to rebar catalog, now what you'll see is that catalog is populated where before it wasn't. So these are all of the bits and pieces and it's actually bringing in the different versions of them as we go. So let me see if I can find one that's been, um, more populated it's doing them in order so it's all the 410s so crib i think is in here yep so here's the two versions of that file um, this is if it's content if it's a plugin um, like the certs plugin you're going to get a directory because then we actually have to bring in different versions of the um, binaries so it's actually building a fully localized catalog uh, that, that I can use to run on the thing. And remember, a lot of this is designed around air gapping and, and we're thinking really carefully about when a manager is working, you want the manager to have everything it needs and have a canonical set. You do not want it to have to pull things off the internet. So the managers need to be independent and then we need to wrap those things up. Where this starts getting fun is, let me see if I can find my uh, DRP version. So uh, in this case, where's my, my endpoint running? Oh, all right, so it finished doing all that, all that work. And uh, I have one more command to run over here. And that command from manager is, uh, let's see, I lost it. Oh, it's right here. So I ran this one, I need to build the catalog from that. Cool, all right, so now I've built the catalog. That's, just, that's really just cleans it up after the, we've already done this once, so we're just repeating it. So now my, um, let's see where I'm running server from. Uh, it doesn't show me easily. All right, I'm just gonna stop it over here. I'm running it in home rob DRP 41. Excellent. So over here, home rob DRP 41. All right, so this is my DRP directory. And let's see, now I want to go in and look at my TFTP. 
and I don't have permissions, of course. <laughs> wonder if it's asking me to provide a login at some, some point. Nope. I never figured out how to do this in the window. Oh well. Um, all right, so I installed a openness administrator <laughs> option. Easy enough. Gotta type in my password correctly. And let's see, so this looks like I'm now in as administrator, so I opened a brand new window, yay. So now I see all of the TFTP root things. Yay, that's great. Files, rebar catalog. This looks fantastic. Um, and so before I just go in and grab that, what I do want to do is I want to see if my um, either administrator or nothing, I guess. Let's see. So I want to see if my um, downloaded catalog, my, let's see, static catalog zip, just want to see how it's structured. So in this case, it's not structured with um, from the root, so I'm going to need to replicate that file system over here. Or better yet, what I can do is I can just replace it, um, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm grabbing the things that I need in another window, and I'm just going to drop them over. Uh, I do need DRP CLI, which let's see. So we have to get. I have to figure. So in this case, I need a DRP CLI. I'm going to repeat this process. It, make it happen. I didn't need UX views, or at least I didn't have UX views in the thing. So one of the things that's worth doing here is I'm, I want to compare certs, Docker context, DRP, community catalog, crib, manager, rack and catalog, um, which we're overriding, so that's fine. Um, but I'll probably want to take out. Uh, rack and license, I want to take that out. So I don't want these things in this zip file. Um, definitely don't want them in the zip file and the task manager. So uh, over here, let's go ahead and take this out. Why? So task library and removing from the zip and rack and license I don't want in the zip. So over here, I'm going to take these other ones that I did want and bring them over. Can't tell if it did anything. Let's see. Nope. That seems wonky. Oh, actually, because I don't want certs to have the old versions in here, so I'm going to get rid of all of them except DRP CLI, which I still still need. And over here, I do not know why it's actually not creating a zip file for me that uh, is doing that. Hmm. Seems weird to me. I'm going to take these and put them in a another directory. Actually, what, I'll, what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these in an archive. Let's see, compress it to, I need a zip file. Uh, and I'm gonna get lazy in this case. Sorry, all right, so here we're gonna take this, we're gonna compress this to a zip file. 
and we're going to call it static demo dot static demo that looks good no oh, this is annoying all right so basically I'm gonna go I'm not gonna drag you all through this process because I have to go back add DRP CLI to the catalog and then um, recreate it but basically I'm gonna take these files and create a new static uh, static zip file and then upload that that is the process and once I've done that I can pre-populate this whole catalog just by uploading that with a compress with an expand flag and that will save all of the downloads and all of the mess uh, from this perspective so Boy, a lot of details, a lot of sort of grinding, but I hope this was helpful for you creating your own static content catalog.